Hi, Dr. Pat here. We're looking at word problems that we use a system of equations and matrices to solve. So these are the things that, uh, you know, I got to be honest, people do not like. And so that's kind of why I like these uh, cartoons and comics from way back when, 1990, before many of you were born. Uh, Gary Larson, he had some great, uh, great things that I remember of and some good chuckles and laughs. So, hey, Gary, if you're listening, thanks a lot. All right, so now let's get into uh, doing some problems here. I've got one problem here, so what I recommend is just going to take a moment, write this down, put pause, uh, write this down, because they're going to be referring to it quite a bit. And so uh, that way you can kind of mark it up as we go. Okay, hopefully you wrote that down. I'm ready to go. So when uh, working a problem, I actually kind of want to make a recommendation, and that's to, to kind of cheat. Not really cheat, but just basically go to the end of the end of the statements. All this gibbery gush. There's a lot of information in a word problem, but really to organize the information, I highly recommend going to the end, find out what the question is, because that will help us identify things. It'll help us organize our information. So I just want you to know that one of the things that I do uh, when I'm given a word problem is I'm basically trying to identify what we're trying to look for. Okay, so in this case, we're trying to look for the number of sections of each course, and so that is what I'm going to identify as my variables. So those are going to be my X, Y's, and Z's. And of course, you can use any letters you want. I just happen to be using X, Y, and Z. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. So now that I've identified what we're playing with, I, I kind of take another browse through it. And so what I've done is I took out the beginning sentence and the end sentence because I didn't need those anymore. And so now I'm kind of browsing through. And for these types of problems, I just kind of want to give you a little tidbits, a little help, uh, some observations that I've made doing these things over the years. And this is, um, this is the key. I'm going to look at some information here at the end, this last sentence. And this information is important for me because there's a certain pattern of how I do problems and this is going to help me identify how to organize my information. The key thing here is that information that I've highlighted is information about the totals. We're talking about a total of eight sections offered. We're talking about a total of 308 students. and We're talking about a total revenue of 320k. 320,000. And so basically I have information about totals. Now you might be thinking what's so big, what's so what's so key about that is it's key that I want to know about this information because it helps me figure out how to organize my data so that I can make my equations and my matrices very quickly. And here's what happens. Because I have totals, I may, I'm going to make a nice chart here. And in the column headings, I'm going to have the things that are my X, Y, and Z, the number of sections for these three different courses. They're my X, Y's, and Z's. And then I'm going to have a, a total as one of my column headings as well. I do this when I see information about totals. If I don't see information about totals about relationships, that's a different type of word problem that, that I have a different approach for solving. So when I see totals and I've got this list of totals, then this is telling me the approach that I use. So this is this is how I do things. And so now what I do on the row headings, I put the three things that I had totals about. We had the total number of sections. It was eight. Total number of students, something like 308. Total revenue. 320k. So when I have my totals in a word problem, I then make each of those pieces, uh, section, students, and revenue, the, the pieces of information I had totals about, I make them my row headings. And so then each row here is going to be, to be about the number of sections. And then the middle row here is going to be about the number of students in each of those classes. And then the revenue for each of those classes. So that's what I got going, all because I saw total in my uh, word problem. Now I go back to the word problem and I gotta extract my information. And so some of this information we see is that for Math 140, we have a total of 40 students, or no, excuse me, not a total of 40. We have 40 students in each uh, section, and that's bringing us a revenue of 40K. So basically, I take that 40, those two 40s, I got 40 students and 40,000. So what I do is where I see my column here of Math 140, VX information, I have 40 students and then that's 40K. I'm using that of Ks here just to indicate thousands. 
just because uh, too many zeros or it just gets kind of small and scrunched. So I'm just going to use 40k. And I'm actually going to talk about later on that I actually really don't need to use my zeros in the matrix that I'm going to make later on. Okay, so then I go back to the words, and then I see some of my next things that I've got to uh, highlight. It's information about Math 148, that class. It's got 40 students in each section, and then that's going to earn $60,000 each uh, each course. And so then I just put that information in my student row here and my revenue row. It didn't tell me any information about the number of sections. It just told me about the number of students and the revenue for each of those classes. And then I go back to the words, looking for any last bits of information. And yep, Math 146 here has 36 students, and it earns a re earns a revenue of 20,000. So I put my 36 in the student row, and I put my 20,000 in the revenue row, all in that Z column, the Math 146 column. So now I'm, I'm organized my data. I'm just kind of listing the data. I have all the information that I have from the word problem. There's no additional numbers that I have in the word problem. But as you can see, what am I going to do about this first row? Because in that first row, there's no numbers. And there were no numbers in the word problems. So how do I deal with that? So how do I figure that out is, is I'm going to kind of just kind of go a little bit of a tangent here just just bear with me for a second and I'll come back to you and tell you what numbers I put in alright so now I'm going to paraphrase the situation about our classes we have three classes combined together we will have a total of eight sections that's the words I paraphrased what the word problem was given me so the three classes combined together will make eight sections now if I were to make it an equation based upon that sentence, I would have a nice equation of x plus y plus z equals 8. Each of the number of the sections for Math 140, the number of sections for Math 148, the number of sections for uh, Math 146 added together, combined, is supposed to be a total of 8 sections. So that's my equation. Now from previous uh, videos you may recall how we translate from equations to matrices and so this equation would translate into this matrix we take the coefficients of the x y's and z's three ones there and then we bring the eight that constant number and this would be my matrix so from the equation I can make a matrix and you're seeing coefficients of one when we're doing this combination of things when we add things together and so what I want to do then is kind of fudge my chart a little bit so I'm gonna take those ones and put them in my first row here because the way I view my chart is is that for the X column there's an X in front of or as a coefficient these numbers are coefficients of X so this would be 1x 40x 40kx and so then for the Y column here that would be 1y 40y 60ky and then the last one for the Z's here would be 1Z, 36Z, 20KZ. And so basically then I can go across and make my equation. 1X plus 1Z or 1Y plus 1Z equals 8. 40X plus 40Y plus 36Z equals 308. 40x plus 60y plus 20z equals 320. So basically, think about each row, you can bring the x and y's down, and you can make your equation. So that's kind of, I'm going reverse way. I knew the equation was going to be x plus y plus z equals 8. So then when it came back to the chart, I knew that I can just put the 1's, and it's a very similar type of representation for that. Now that I've got my chart, one of the key things here is this chart's really cool for me. I can do a couple of things. I can actually make equations by doing what we just did, but put in the x, y's, and z's, and then translate those equations into a matrix. You can do it that way if you want. But the second way, this is so much nice, this chart is actually a matrix. So I can go straight into the matrix so what I'm doing there is I'm taking my row here that's going to be the top row of my matrix my second row of the matrix is going to be all about students and my third row of the matrix is about the revenue so when I'm looking at this matrix of just numbers do you remember that it's been taking it's kind of like shearing off shredding the, the, the context away now remember that first column is all about the X's the second column is all about the Y's the third column is about the Z's and then our constant 
constant numbers. And then each row now has a context. Each first row is about students. The second row, whoops, excuse me, first row is about sections. Second row is about students. And then that third row is about revenue. So basically, that's how I make my matrices. Now to solve this, um, you can use your technologies. You can do this by hand, uh, or you can use your technology. Type it into like your TI-84 or any other kind of calculator. Do the appropriate steps to it to get your solution matrix. And in this case, my solution matrix, yeah, it's going to turn out to be. 1002, uh, 0103, 0013, and that's a really great matrix because we can read that really quickly to say, oh yeah, remember this right here repre represented the X, and X for us was Math 140, the number of sections of Math 140, and this 2 right here tells me two sections of Math 140. The second column here represented our Y values. That's what I called my Math 148. So this is the second row right here is telling me that uh, Y equals 3, that we have three sections of Math 148. And this last row right here, that's my third column there. That was my Z column. So this is saying Z equals 3. And interpretation-wise, Z is Math 146. So I've got three sections of Math 146. I hope this was helpful. I show uh, demonstrating the kind of an approach that I have for when I have a word problem that lists for me totals. So that was the key thing for me. This approach was because the word problem all had these totals involved and I was able to make an equation or we can make lines, a chart based on those totals. Thanks and have a good day.